So Eileen, how is pancreatic cancer treated nowadays? What can we offer our patients when we're giving them such a diagnosis? Right, so I think the first thing we want to do is understand what stage of the disease the patient has because that determines what will be the best approach in terms of mm -hmm. treatment. So for perhaps for a moment to discuss patients with localized pancreas cancer where it's not involving blood vessels and suitable for an operation. In that context for uh, tumors that arise in the head of the pancreas, mm -hmm. which is the most common area where we see pancreas cancer, the main intervention uh, would be a Whipple operation, which is a big operation where we take out the head of the pancreas, usually the gallbladder. Uh, we take out uh, the common bile duct, which is the drainage channel from the gallbladder, and reconnect that to the bowel. Part of the duodenum, the upper part of the small bowel will come out, and occasionally part of the stomach. Uh, and as you can imagine, there's a, a major replumbing job there to mm -hmm. uh, restore continuity of all of those uh, key areas. So that's a big operation. It'll take most patients somewhere between four, six to eight weeks uh, to recuperate. And there are some, you know, nutritional and dietary challenges in the short term uh, as they recover. So that would be for a person with a localized pancreas cancer in the head. If we see that the tumor is in the body or the tail, so more over to the left side of the pancreas, uh, the operation is technically a little bit more straightforward in that you don't have to do major reconstruction. Uh, and you take out the uh, left side of the pancreas and typically the spleen will come out as well. And recovery time tends to be a little quicker in that context. So for people who have non-operable uh, pancreas cancer, and that's perhaps the majority of patients that we encounter, mm -hmm. treatment will be tailored uh, as to whether or not we see evidence of spread of the cancer beyond the pancreas and whether or not we see significant blood vessel involvement. So for example, just to take uh, the setting where the cancer isn't operable but it hasn't spread and there may be a potential down the road for surgery. In that context, we would uh, usually recommend treatment with upfront chemotherapy, so medicines given into the vein or sometimes taken by mouth mm -hmm. to try and see if we can shrink the cancer down. Often at a later point, we would add in both a combination of radiation and chemotherapy, which can help cause some retraction of the tumor away from blood vessels. And sometimes at a later point in the after that combination of treatment, it may be go possible for the surgical team to go back and readdress an operation. However, for perhaps the bigger group with localized pancreas cancer involving blood vessels, not operable but not spread, it isn't feasible to do an operation. And there, our main focus uh, is on chemotherapy and radiation in terms of controlling the cancer. Yeah, no, I totally agree, and, and it's also very important, and that's what I found in our clinic, to explain to patients that they must go to a center where there's surgical expertise as well. It's very interesting to see how the surgical field, and none of us are surgeons, but it's interesting to see how it's evolving and how many centers are going to laparoscopic surgery, robotic surgery, and uh, that are getting extremely good outcomes, you know, regarding the surgery per se. Yeah, I think to, to pick up on that, there are probably two key things that matter, uh, both the experience of the surgeon, but also the supportive environment in which the surgeon practices. So the expertise in terms of nursing, anesthesiology, uh, post-operative uh, recovery uh, support, all of that uh, very clearly influences the outcomes after pancreatic surgery. Uh. I think we don't know yet fully where uh, these newer techniques of uh, laparoscopic uh, surgery, robotic surgery, fit for big cancer operations. I think it's fair to say for smaller tumors in the body or tail of the pancreas that these approaches may be suitable. But for tumors in the head of the pancreas, I think we've yet to fully understand whether that's going to be the way of the future or this is perhaps not the best setting uh, for more limited exposure, surgical-based approaches. Eileen, in our institution, we have a weekly meeting 
uh, regarding these patients and we'll discuss every single patient. We have a medical oncologist, we have our pancreas surgeons, we have our clinical pancreatologists also in the room, therapeutic endoscopies, radiology, pathology. We're all there together with what we in most of the centers call the multidisciplinary approach uh, to treat and combat these conditions. Any comments that you want to make on, on how important this is? I can't emphasize enough how important that is, that we shouldn't be making unilateral decisions on how to approach these, these patients. It's truly a disease that requires careful, multidisciplinary assessments. And as you know, there can be a lot of subtlety sometimes, and it's very helpful to review the scans with the radiologist, to have the medical oncologist present history, to have the radiation team add their perspective, and as a gastroenterologist to add your thoughts in terms of how best to secure the diagnosis and to uh, treat the patient. Yes, I think this is key, and I think for patients and families that's actually a very reassuring point to know that we discuss this and that we have a consensus input in terms of how to approach uh, the setting. Absolutely. Thank you.